In March of 1959, the U.S. Army issued a top-secret document titled Project Horizon to the U.S. government. Tensions were rising amidst the ongoing space race between the U.S. and the Soviets, and the document called for the creation of a lunar outpost that was of critical importance to the armed forces and the interests of the United States on the moon. Soon, a study to determine the feasibility of constructing a military and scientific moon base inhabited by 12 men was set in motion, and it was required to be powered by nuclear reactors, making it self-sufficient and equipped with unguided low-yield atomic warheads to defend it from Soviet incursions. Several top engineers, including Werner von Braun, were tasked to overview the project, but when the U.S. learned that the USSR intended to celebrate the October Revolution in 1967 on their own moon base, the clock began ticking. Up to the years before the end of World War II, Germany was the unquestionable leader regarding rocket technology and the potential to one day reach outer space. The Germans were the first to launch the first artillery shells from the stratosphere to impact a city with the Paris gun in 1918, which had a range of more than 100 kilometers. They also surpassed themselves with the V-2 ballistic missile. Developed by engineer Werner von Braun, it became the first man-made object to leave the atmosphere and enter outer space, and there was no Allied countermeasure to the devastating effects of this lethal rocket. However, the Third Reich had fallen by the end of the war, and the nation was devastated. The Allied forces had ravaged the secret laboratories where German scientists hid valuable technology and information, and the spoils had gone to the victors. Realizing that the Germans were a step ahead of the most brilliant minds within the Allied contingent, the victors decided to capture German scientists to push forward their own agendas. The American, British, French, and Soviets all wanted to combine the atomic bomb's power with the tremendous range and speed of the V-2 rocket to develop the ultimate mass destruction bomb. The U.S. then recruited hundreds of German scientists between 1945 and 1959 under Operation Paperclip to help develop their nuclear and space programs. These experts included von Braun and his staff. The Soviets did the same, but by the time the Korean War broke out in 1950, Von Braun and his team had already helped the U.S. produce the Redstone and Jupiter nuclear missiles. By 1955, the USSR was catching up with the nuclear advancements of its Cold War enemy under the leadership of Sergei Korolev. And while the tensions of the arms race escalated while developing the most powerful intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs, a new race began, and it would take place in outer space. When the Soviet Union launched the Sputnik satellite in October of 1957, U.S. morale took a heavy blow. Both the population and the nation's allies felt vulnerable against the apparent technological superiority of the Soviets. This prompted President Dwight D. Eisenhower and his administration to create NASA in 1958 to bolster the American space program, and von Braun and his German staff became an integral part of the U.S. effort to recover its prestige after the USSR proved to be a worthy rival. As the army worried about the rising Soviet threats and the nation's capability to one day reach the moon, a plan was drafted to put the U.S. at an advantage. The idea was for the U.S. to establish a base on the moon before the Soviets did. By March of 1959, things were not going well for the American space program. NASA had absorbed NACA to concentrate manpower and resources, but the agency was still under a tight budget. Even worse, the Soviets were still ahead in the space race. It was then that Lieutenant General Arthur G. Trudeau, the U.S. Army's Chief of Research and Development, proposed a highly ambitious plan to establish a military and scientific base on the lunar surface. The program was called Project Horizon, and it was mind-blowing. At the time, the idea was beyond reasonable. Putting not just a man in space, but an entire team of 12 to operate a top-secret base on the moon was considered madness, but many believed it was attainable, if not easy. The reasons and objectives behind this secret lunar outpost were detailed in a 118-page study whose ultimate goal was simple. It called for a self-sustained moon base that would serve as a military and scientific outpost for future U.S. explorations on the moon and space. The base would be operated by 12 or 20 highly trained men, and its military purpose was to protect U.S. interests on the moon and serve as a deterrent to future Soviet exploration of the lunar surface. Trudeau specified that the army base could be finished by 1966 if everything went as planned. However, according to secret informants, the Soviet Union planned to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the October Revolution on the moon in 1967, prompting the Pentagon to fast-track Project Horizon. In the study, Trudeau wrote, quote, To be second to the Soviet Union in establishing an outpost on the moon would be disastrous to our nation's prestige and in turn to our democratic philosophy. 
Consequently, the Pentagon contacted the most qualified man to overview Project Horizon, Werner von Braun. By then, the scientist was the head of the Army Ballistic Missile Agency. Von Braun and one of the members of his staff, Hermann Kola, went through the study and divided it to assign specific sections to the most appropriate Army department. During this process, his own missile agency was tasked with studying the types of rockets required to carry all the equipment to the moon. Meanwhile, the Corps of Engineers would study the best construction methods and the most suited type of maintenance for the moon base, and the Signal Corps was tasked to analyze the long-range communications needs and radio signals. After more than three months of meticulous research, von Braun and Köhler came up with a report titled Project Horizon, a U.S. Army study for establishing a lunar military post. The two volumes were sent to the Pentagon in June of 1959 for evaluation. The introduction read, quote, the U.S. intelligence community agrees that the Soviet Union may accomplish a manned lunar landing at any time after 1965. Political, scientific, and security considerations indicate that the United States must establish a lunar outpost at the earliest practicable date. Project Horizon was expected to cost $6 billion, or $700 million per year, and its operational date was set for December of 1966. In addition, the Army concluded that over 100 Saturn I or 74 Saturn II rocket launches would be required to deliver the necessary components and equipment to the lunar outpost if they began in 1959. Then, once the base was set up, another 50 Saturn rocket launches would be required to supply it. Technicians considered that natural caves on the moon could be covered and sealed to create a living place. Using pressure bags and other materials would protect the outpost from meteorites and other space debris. Drawings from the study included buried cylindrical structures with different living areas for the crew, and two nuclear reactors would provide the necessary power. Meanwhile, water and oxygen would be extracted from the moon, and the crew would wear spacesuits and specific equipment to survive by themselves. The outpost would be defended from Soviet attacks with specially developed Claymore mines designed for space, and a parabolic antenna would be used to communicate with Earth. Additionally, the crew would use the recently developed Davy Crockett anti-tank weapon, a nuclear recoilless gun that fired an M388 sub-kiloton atomic projectile, and two surface vehicles would be used for hauling, rescue, and reconnaissance operations. The base would serve as a deterrent to Soviet incursions on the moon, and if they arrived, they would be rapidly countered by the American forces set up at the lunar outpost. The Army argued that if the project was given top priority, similar to what the Manhattan Project got in World War II, it could be done. As alluring as the project was, President Eisenhower did not approve it, citing the considerable resources it would consume and how they could be employed for other programs. The conflict in Vietnam was also reaching new heights, and the army was already spending more than initially thought when it came to arming the Vietnamese allied forces in their fight against communism. Moreover, the Kennedy administration decided to focus on the peaceful conquest of space, after the president announced in 1961 that his primary objective was to land on the moon, even extending the Soviet Union the option to do it together. Still, the army kept pushing the idea behind Project Horizon, but it became impossible when the US, the United Kingdom, and the Soviet Union signed the Outer Space Treaty in 1967, calling for the peaceful use of the moon and outer space. To this day, many experts continue to circle the idea, hoping that NASA will establish a moon base that can cooperate with the International Space Station.